on today's show, BMW experiments with backup power from an i3 EV, Tesla isn't going private after all, and the Jaguar I-Pace electric SUV claims a new track record for production electric cars at the WeatherTech Raceway Laguna Seca in California. These stories and more coming next. This is Ecotricity's Ecotech Roundup show from New Zealand's only Carbon Zero certified renewable electricity company. We're 100% Kiwi and 50% community owned. Switch today at ecotricity.co.nz. Hi there, I'm Nikki, your resident Ecotech host, and after a week off, I've got plenty of stories for you this week. We start with Faraday Future, the Chinese-backed Silicon Valley automaker that most of us thought would be relegated to the history books by now. It's just proven everyone wrong and successfully produced its first pre-production FF91 luxury SUV on a brand new production line in Hanford, California. The FF91 has a sprint time of under 2.4 seconds and packs a range in excess of 378 miles, 600 plus kilometers, from a 130 kilowatt hour battery pack. It will retail for around 300,000 US dollars, but there's still no guarantee we'll see it make production. There are a lot of hurdles ahead of the company after the pre-production process, but its future is certainly looking a lot more rosy than it once did. Have you ever gone somewhere in your electric car only to wish that you could use some of the power stored in its battery pack to give you off-grid mains electricity? I know I have, and in the past, I've even hooked up a mains inverter to one of my cars to keep the house running in a blackout. But now BMW is experimenting with backup power, retrofitting a couple of i3 electric cars with mains power inverters that can be used to turn the electricity stored in the battery pack into mains power. To highlight what it could be used for, BMW made a short video showing how, for example, you could use an i3 with this feature to power a remote hunting lodge over a weekend getaway. There's no commitment that this feature will ever into production, but if it ever does, I'll be sure to let you know. It's not happening. Less than three weeks after announcing he was considering taking Tesla private, Tesla CEO Elon Musk announced late last week that the board of directors had reached a decision to keep the company public. Citing input from shareholders and the board, Musk said he now believed staying public was the best decision for the company. But the aftermath of this announcement is still ringing around Wall Street, with Tesla shares falling to their lowest price so far this month. In related news, Musk is continuing his Twitter fight with a cave rescuer in Thailand he accused of being a paedophile, so it's not clear if the stock price drop is down to worries about Musk or about Tesla. Thanks to the Second World War, the UK has an inordinate number of disused air bases and airfields dotted around the country. Some have, over the years, found new lives hosting everything from antiques fairs to new housing developments. And this week, British inventor James Dyson announced that a former airfield in Wiltshire, purchased by the company two years ago, will be turned into a factory and 10-mile test track for Dyson's upcoming all-electric car. We still don't know a whole lot about it, but with 517 acres to play with and more than £200 million invested, it's clear that Dyson is serious about bringing its claimed radical electric car to market in 2021. Tesla electric cars are for the most part tough to steal thanks to their always on internet connection and continued tracking capabilities. This week, Tesla began rolling out extra features that will make them even tougher to steal. The features include additional cryptography on new vehicle key fobs and an optional pin code lock on the center console, designed to prevent thieves from stealing a Tesla even if they've somehow gained access to the inside of the car and have the key fob. It's a simple feature, but it isn't the first time we've seen pin codes on an EV. The EV1 had a keypad for you to enter a code as part of its startup process. Last week, during the Monterey Car Week in Pebble Beach, California, Mercedes-Benz unveiled its Vision EQ Silver Arrow, a concept race car that combines classic 1930s styling with Mercedes-Benz all-new electric drivetrain. I don't normally give a huge lot of attention to concepts like this, but this particular vehicle really does look fabulous. And while its battery is only 80 kilowatt hours in size, it envisages a future where in-road inductive charging will keep you going without needing to stop and charge. Automotive startup Byton was also in Pebble Beach last week. There's a feature on that on the way. But this week we learned that it's finally begun on-road testing in China of its prototype M-Byte electric car. 
Unlike many other car companies, Byton says it's designed the m -Byte and other cars in the range to be upgradable, changing the conversation about vehicle ownership and sustainability. The prototypes being driven are early alpha units, but with a factory already being built in China and Byton hoping to make its cars in the not too distant future, it might not be long before it's chasing Faraday future into the EV marketplace, assuming it clears the same hurdles notwithstanding. Turn signals. The little things that tell everyone what you're going to do next, but if you happen to drive certain cars, seem to be considered something of an optional item. Turns out, though, no pun intended, that Tesla wants to change that, submitting a patent that would leverage its autopilot software and turn signals to automatically turn on and the turn signal if the driver forgets or is just too lazy. It's a clever idea and certainly follows in Tesla's long tradition of trying to make cars that are cleaner, greener, safer and smarter. After overwhelming interest from fans and potential customers, Jaguar has confirmed it will bring its E-Type Zero Conversion Kit to market. The kit will replace the car's original internal combustion engine, either straight six, V6 or V12, with an all-electric drivetrain mated to the car's original transmission. The 40 kilowatt hour battery pack should give around 170 miles, 273 kilometers of range, thanks to the E-Type's lightweight design. And the whole thing is completely reversible should the owner want to go back to suck, squeeze, bang, blow. The only thing missing? Price, which I'll admit is unlikely to be cheap. Next week, Mercedes-Benz will officially unveil the EQC electric crossover, the first Benz to be launched under the EQ brand. To get everyone salivating, the company published another teaser video this week, showing us a little of the car's front end. And it also published a second test drive video featuring a camouflaged EQC being driven by former racing car driver, Susie Wolf. Obviously, the driver's a sponsored one, but I think this car is going to be another one to watch when it launches next week. And finally, we already know that Jaguar I-Pace is pretty quick and even has its own race series starting soon, thanks to a collaboration with Formula E. But this week, it set a claimed brand new record for production electric cars at the WeatherTech Raceway Laguna Seca course in California. Completing the course in 1 minute 48.18 seconds, the production EV has set the bar pretty high. Although, according to my records, the fastest production EV was the Tesla Model S, driven by David Lickfold at this year's Refuel TT. He managed the same course in 1 minute 47.62 seconds. Either way, both of these times are pretty close to one another, right? And on that note, I'm going to say goodbye. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. Tell your friends about the show. And if you've got some feedback, well, you know where to send it. As always, I'll be back soon with more Ecotech goodness. So make sure you hit that notification bell and then you'll find out the minute, the second a new show is uploaded. In the meantime, have a fantastic weekend. Make sure you do something fun. And don't forget to help keep those wind turbines spinning by switching to New Zealand's only Carbon Zero certified renewable electricity company. Thanks for joining me. I'm Nikki Gordon-Bloomfield. Kakite. See you next time.